Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to be doing a bit of a comparison between the Lenovo Legion Go, the Asus ROG Ally, and the Valve Steam Deck. Let's look at six different sections. We'll look at the screen, the sound and audio, the controls, ergonomics and weight, performance and battery, and then features, price, and value. Starting with the screen, you would think this is a given, as the Steam Deck has an OLED screen while the Asus ROG Ally has IPS and so does the Legion Go. But it's a bit more complicated than that. The Go has a massive 8.8 inch QHD screen, which is 2560 by 1440p. The ROG Ally has a 7 inch FHD screen, which is 1920 by 1080 and the Steam Deck is a 7.4 inch OLED, and that's 1280 by 800. Color-wise, the OLED wins hands down, and then to my eyes, it's the Go Next, and the Ally after. Adding in any angles as well, and it's the same 1, 2, 3. The OLED screen is just fantastic. Now, where the situation changes is the DeX 800p display. Looking at the start screen of Persona 5 Royal, for example, and you can see the lower resolution on the deck compared to the Ally, which is at 1080p, or the Go, which is at 1440p. So while OLED is fantastic on the deck, you do lose a bit of the display being a lower resolution than the competition. The importance of all this will depend on the games you play as newer modern games will struggle at 1080p on these devices anyway, whereas 800 and 900p is usually the way to go. Moving on to sound and audio, let's start off with the fan noise first, and then we'll jump into speakers. For fan noise, it's a very clear 1, 2, 3 for me. The Lenovo Legion Go's fan is extremely loud, and it's not even close. If I throw it into quiet mode, which is a low TDP mode, then you don't hear a lot of it, but it's still loud enough, but you can't play much at the 8 watts that that mode is in. And I find the device to get really hot in that mode anyways. But if you jump into balanced or performance, the fan is extremely loud, and you never want to enable full fan speed. In comparison, the next up would be the Ally, and while it's much quieter than the Go is, it can still get loud on its own, especially in turbo mode. The DEC OLED surprised me, as it has the best fan out of all three, something that the original DEC had major issues with. I can barely ever hear the DEC OLED's fan. I thought it was broken, but no, it's just whisper quiet. On the actual audio, and it has the best speakers. They're fuller sounding, and you also have Dolby Atmos as an option. The deck would be a close second. I thought they sound great as well. The Legion Go is a distant third for having top firing speakers, and just doesn't sound as good as the other two. Music 
Let's talk about the controls. This part will be totally opinionated, as there's just no other way for me to do it. Looking at the sticks first, and I find that the ROG Ally has the best sticks out of the three, followed very closely by the Lenovo Legion Go, and then the Steam Deck. It's hard to explain why I like the Ally over the Go here, something just feels a bit more comfortable about it, and it could be the entirety of the device just being more comfortable, or something else, but to me the Ally sticks are second to none. However, the Go sticks are a very close second. They feel great too. I can't say that I'm a big fan of the sticks on the deck. I thought that after the LCD model and how much they needed thumb grips, that it would be fixed here given that they're new sticks. But that's just not the case. Unfortunately, the thumb grips I had from the LCD deck just doesn't fit this one. So I'm going to have to wait for new thumb grips here. I don't find the grips necessary on the Ally or the Go, but it's definitely needed on the deck for me. Looking at the D-pad, and it's a pretty clear 1-2-3 for me. The deck's D-pad just feels the best to use, even if it isn't the most accurate D-pad in the world. None of them really are. The Ally's D-pad is a near second to me. I don't mind the circle, and I find it pretty comfortable to use. The Go's D-pad is a distant third. I really, really don't like the stiffness of this D-pad or the lack of travel. Moving on to the face buttons, and in my opinion, the large ally buttons just can't be beat. They just feel fantastic to use, to push, and everything. Close second is the Steam Deck, as those buttons just feel great as well. Last up is the Lenovo Legion Go, as I'm just not a big fan of the buttons and with how they feel in comparison to the other two devices. With the triggers, it's honestly a tie, I think. They all feel great in their own way, but with the one caveat that the Lenovo Legion Go's triggers have a small issue. There's the shell around the triggers that get in the way when you're pushing down. So your finger touches the shell and it feels like a resistance that's just unnatural. Ergonomics and comfort is a tough thing to measure, as I can only do this from my personal experience, my hand size, what I prefer to hold, and all of that. So this section will be entirely just my opinion here. And in my opinion, it isn't a very close race. The Steam Deck OLED is by far the most comfortable and ergonomic of the three devices. With the removal of weight for this model, and how they seem to have spread it out better, it's a night and day difference compared to the LCD model. And it's just super comfortable in every way to hold. Second would be the Asus ROG Ally to me, even though I do use a grip case with it nowadays, but I had it for months without any. The curved edges of the bottom that the deck and Ally have really helped with holding it, and it just feels good to hold. For me, the device is a bit on the tall side, and so it's not close in comfort to the deck. However, I don't think it's uncomfortable either. Third would be the Lenovo Legion Go. My hands are on the average to smaller side, so holding this device isn't very comfortable, even if you take out the weight aspect. The blocky sides get in the way quite often, and I wish they would have gone with the approach that the deck and ally did of curving the bottom corners. Weight wise, we have the same order. Valve did some voodoo here with the OLED that makes it feel so much lighter than before, even though it's only 30 grams. But it's a very noticeable difference. The deck is very comfortable to hold with this weight for long stretches. I didn't have an issue with the ally either, However, I do think that it needs more repositioning than the deck, but only by a small amount. The Legion Go needed a dedicated spot for me to play it with. A pillow, a desk, a table, or something. The weight for me was a lot, and I found myself needing to rest it on something quite a bit. There's a lot of videos out there doing a comparison of these three devices for performance, so I'm just going to do a quick comparison just to give you a quick idea of what that looks like. So taking a quick look at Cyberpunk 2077 here, and we're at 15 watts on each device, 
medium settings, and 800p on the go, and we're getting 54.54 FPS. Doing that same test at 1200p and with uncapped TDP, and we get 40.05. And now the Ally with 720p, medium again, and we get 50.93. Doing the same test at 1080p with uncapped TDP at 30 watt turbo, and we get 45.15. Lastly, the deck with 800p medium, and we get 42.57. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn and doing the same tests. 15 watt, medium settings, 800p. No upscaling at all. The Legion Go is at 55 FPS. The ROG Ally is at 50 FPS. And the deck is at 46 FPS. So what's the takeaway from this? Well, the Ally and the Go will trade blows for the most part, with the deck being a bit further behind. But things are really close at 15 watt with only a few FPS between them. Battery wise, however, it's a completely different story. The Steam Deck OLED is the winner here by a pretty large margin, and let's look at two different scenarios. The first is 10 watt TDP with max screen brightness and Wi-Fi on. I was able to get 181 minutes of battery life, so three hours just basically on the dot. At 15 watt, it was 122 minutes. On the Ally at 10 watt, I was able to get 111 minutes, and at 15 watt, it was 84 minutes. On the Lenovo Legion Go at 10 watt, I was able to get 125 minutes. And at 15 watt, I was able to get 93 minutes. All right, so the big one here. Let's talk about features first. Starting with the deck, and I think the obvious one is SteamOS. Out of all three devices, this is the easiest device to just boot up and play a game, as well as understand controls, the menu, and all of that. But this is as long as the game that you want is a Steam game. Of course. Next up would be the OLED screen and the 90Hz refresh rate. On the Ally, the screen is the standout feature with 120Hz variable refresh rate. The Ally is the device you want if you'll be playing any sort of demanding game, as the VR on it is a game changer for just these types of devices. Next up, in my opinion, is the speakers. They sound fantastic. For the Lenovo Legion Go, the FPS mode is the standout feature on it, as well as the ability to just take off the controllers and use them separately. It turns the Go into a tablet of sorts, which is a really cool function. The inclusion of the kickstand, the massive screen, the screen's resolution, and the eGPU support are all secondary to me, but they're awesome features. This would be the best of the three for an actual desktop replacement, thanks to eGPU support. So let's take a look at the prices, and prices are all over the place for these devices. The Steam Deck OLED is $549 US dollars for the 512 gigabyte model. The Asus ROG Ally is normally $699 US dollars, but it's on sale for $599, and you can also get open box units for 479. Then we have the Lenovo Legion Go and that's 749 US dollars, but you can get open box units at 562 dollars. It's a very interesting spread and it's interesting to see how far prices have come down in such a small bit of time. So let's talk use cases here and why you would buy one device over the other in a condensed kind of version in my own personal opinion. Starting with the Steam Deck OLED, and I think you get the deck over the other two if you don't have an operating system preference, you buy most of your games directly from Steam, and you just want something that easily works out of the box with a fantastic screen, barely any fan noise, and decent power. I think the deck OLED makes the most sense of the three as an easy recommendation to almost anyone. Looking at the ROG Ally next, and I think the Ally makes the most sense if you just want Windows, want the extra power that the Ally has, and you want the 120Hz variable refresh rate screen, plus just a larger screen overall. The Ally is kind of the middle child in this, 
As in my mind, it's the jack of all trades, but master of none. You do give up battery life and ease of use with going with the ally over the deck, but that will be true with the Go as well. And so that brings me to the Lenovo Legion Go. And I see the Go as a good option for people that want a device with open eGPU support to turn this into a desktop replacement that you can bring on the go with you. It has a very large screen and that high resolution helps with navigating windows and the cool features of removing the controllers if you're looking for that functionality. Once again, you do give up battery life, ease of use, and for the go specifically, you inherit a much noisier fan and just not as good ergonomics depending on your hands. That's gonna be it for this one. I tried to make this video as close to just factual information as possible and tried to just remove my bias and my own opinions as much as I could. Although of course there's certain sections where it's just necessary and you can't talk about it without talking about your own personal experiences. But I do hope that as we come close to the holiday season right now and you're making decisions on maybe which one of these to buy, I hope this video helped you in maybe making a decision or bringing you closer to making a decision. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow and hope you all have a good one.